Hello everyone, welcome back to Maxim Automation. In my last video, we saw how to create a new project of type and unit in Visual Studio. And we have seen how we can follow the page object model to create the automation framework. So here in this project, we created two folders as source and test. And inside the source folder, I have created another folder for pages where we'll keep all the page object classes. Then under the pages folder, I have created a page class as homepage.cs. So whatever number of web pages we have in our application, we can keep all the page classes for those web pages under this pages folder. And then we had created another folder as test to keep all our test classes. And those classes will contain the automation test. So in my last session, we wrote only one test to search for a book on amazon.com. And then we added one assertion to check for the browser title. And you can see that we have one init script method which is being associated with the setup attribute. So this method will execute before every test. And here in this method, we have created the web driver object by using the Chrome driver. Similarly, we have created one teardown method to clean up the web driver object by using the driver.quit method. This method will execute after each test ends. Now let's say if I have multiple test classes and those classes contains multiple test methods. In that case, I need to create the web driver object or I need to copy the same code to each and every test class so that the test method can access the web driver object. But that should not be done because if I copy the same code on each and every test class, then it will not only create the redundant code, but if I need to change anything related to web driver initialization, then I need to update it at each and every class. Let's say if I need to support Firefox browser as well, then we need to change the driver initialization for each class. So we should not follow this practice to copy and paste the same code in different classes. Now let's see how we can refactor the code so that we can do the web driver initialization at a single place and the same can be utilized at different places. First of all, let's move to the application which is amazon.com. And now Let's say I need to automate another test, which is basically for an invalid login. And to log in into the application, first I need to click on this sign in link. And then I need to enter the email address over here. Click on continue. And then enter the password. and click on sign in because i have given the incorrect email and password so we receive this error message over here now to write the automation test for this scenario let's move to the project first of all i need to create a new page class over here which will contain the page elements and the methods and i'm going to call this class as login page.cs so the class has been created and first let me add a class constructor so that we can initialize the class object by using the same constructor after that i'm going to create the web driver object And then the constructor will also take one input parameter of type web driver object, which can be used by using openqa.selenium. Let's change this over here. So a class constructor has been created. Now let's move to the application to identify the page elements. At first, 
I need to click on this sign in link over here. And because this link is on home page, so I'll be adding this page element in homepage.class. If I identify this element, then you can see it's a type of link and it contains the ID attribute which we can use to identify this object. So now let's copy this ID and move to the project. Since the link was on the home page instead of the login page, so I'll add the page element for link in home page class. Now here I'll create an object of web element for sign in link. And then we need to provide the finds by attribute to find the element on the web page. With locator type as ID. And by using the value of the locator as this. Let's move to the application again. And here, if I click on this link, then it navigates to this sign in page where we need to identify this email text box. Here, this is an input field, and the ID of this element is app underscore email. To store this element, let's move to the project and then to the login page. Here, I'll create an object of web element with name email text. And then here I can type finds by which is available under selenium extras dot page objects namespace and then i can use how equal to how dot id and then using equals to the id of the element so this element is also created now what we need to do, we need to identify the continue button. Here we can see that an ID has been associated with this element. So we can use this ID value continue to identify this element. And then here I can write private I web element and the name of the element as continue button. And then I'll provide the locator type and value for this page element. Now let's move to the next screen by typing email. And click on continue. Now the next thing is to locate this password. Here also we have an ID attribute for this input element. And then similarly, I can create a page element for the password field. Now, the last step is to click on the sign in button. So let's move to the application again. Here also, we can see that we have an ID attribute for this input element. So I can copy this value sign in submit. And then here I'll create a page element for the sign in button as well. Now, inside this constructor, we need to initialize the element by using page factory dot init element. And we'll pass the web driver and the object of this class. 
and now to log in into the application i'll create a method called login which will take two parameters for username and password so to log in into the application first we need to input the text in the email text box then we need to click on the continue button after that we'll enter the password and at last we'll click on the sign in button so this method will be used to perform the login operation to log in to the application now to create the invalid login test I'll create another class for the login page. So let's go to the test folder and then we can create a new class over here. And I'm going to name this class as login page. Now, to create a test method, first I need to create a test attribute and then the method for invalid login after that first i need to create an object of the login page class to access the page methods to initialize the class object we need to pass the web driver object inside this class so what can i do either I can copy the driver initialization code over here in this class which is not a good practice or I can create a base class which will be inherited by all the test classes so let me start first by copying the code into the same class which will run before each and every test and then we'll see how we can refactor our code and similarly I can copy the cleanup code as well to quit the web driver object. Then, here in this test method, first I need to navigate to the Amazon.com web page. Then, I can call the login method to log into the application. And I'll provide the invalid username and password. Now, to verify if my test has passed or not, I need to put an assertion over here. So, here at this page, we can add any assertion to verify that we are still on the sign in page or we are not able to successfully log in to the application. Because we entered incorrect credentials into the login page. So we can verify this error message or we can verify the existence of these objects or I can verify the title of the page as well. So here I can add an assertion by typing assert.true. As I'm going to assert the page title, so I'll use driver dot title dot contains statement and i'll pass the value as amazon sign in now now let me build the project now if i open my test here then you can see we have two tests available. One is for search book and another one is for invalid login. So the invalid login test is ready to execute, but it should fail because we have forgot one step to log in into the application. Because after navigating to the home page of Amazon.com, we have not clicked on the sign in link to move to the sign in page. So let's move to the login page class. And here we need to write the step 
to click on the sign in link as well but as we have the sign in link available on home page class so first let's create an object of the home page class to access the sign in link page element now if we try to access the page elements of another class and if the class variable is private then we won't be able to access the same so what we can do is either we can change the access modifier of the page element to public or we can create a class method to return the element which can be used by other classes currently i'm going to change the access modifier of this page element you can see here now we can access the sign in link page element by using the object of home page class and then call the click method to perform the click operation now our login method is complete and we can run our test so let me run our invalid login test you can see the browser invoked and now it will perform the invalid login operation so the execution is done and our test is passed now the important thing to notice over here is that we have copied these init script and cleanup methods in this class and we cannot copy and paste the same code on each and every test class which we are going to add so instead of this what i can do is first i will create a new folder over here called as drivers and inside this driver folder i am going to add a new class as driver.cs after that i'll go to the test class and will copy the init script method and will paste it over here under driver class similarly i'll copy the tear down method and will paste it over here under driver class now we have this setup and tear down method in driver class which will be called before every test method and i can change this access modifier to public so that all classes can access this web driver object now let's move to each test class and here i can remove the setup and tear down method and then to access the web driver object here in this class which we now created in a driver class i can inherit the driver class into this test class you can see that now we don't get the error for the web driver object so let me perform the same operation for home test class So now we have one base class which can be inherited in any class which wants to use the web driver object this way if there is any change in the driver initialization then we can modify it at a single place and it will be reflected in each and every class similarly i can inherit the driver class not only in test class but also in page class as well so that we don't need to pass the web driver object while creating the object of the class so let's move to the page classes here at this login page class i can remove the web driver object from the constructor then i can inherit the driver class to get the web driver object from the base class and we'll update the web driver object wherever we are using it in this class
Similarly, here at this home page class also, I can remove the web driver object from the constructor. And then I can inherit the driver class here to get the web driver object from the base class. And after that, I'm going to update the web driver object wherever applicable at this class. Now, because we have removed the web driver initialization from the page class constructor, so we need to update the test method as well, where we have passed the web driver object while creating the object of the class. So we have restructured our framework to use the web driver object from the same class called as driver. And here we have three folders. One is for drivers. The other one is for sources. And OK, let me move this driver folder inside the source folder. Now we have only two folders at root level. One is source and the other one is test. And inside the source folder, we have our drivers folder, which contains the driver class. Now, because we are using the same web driver object across the different classes, and to get the same object of the web driver, so that all operations can be performed on the same instance of the browser while running a test, we need to update this web driver object as static. Now we are done with all the changes. So let's run the test. First, I'm going to run this invalid login test. So the browser has been invoked and the test is running. Here the execution is done and we can see the test passed. Similarly, I can execute the other test as well. Again, the browser has been invoked and the test is running. So the execution is done and we can see that this test is also passed. So we have seen how we can create a base class to use the web driver object across all the classes. I hope you liked it. Please put your comments in the comment box. Also, please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.